Shalom. I'm going to take a sip. Give me a second. All right, Shalom. I'm blessed and I'm honored once again to come out here and to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Here in these last days, the Lord is raising up men like myself to come out here and forewarn you of things to come, to give you the word so that you may be awoken out of your deep sleep, so that you may be sealed with this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from the destruction that's coming. Okay? And it's spiritual because there's an X in the uh, sky through the chemtrails. And Esau's going to bring a lot of death. All right? So before I get started, before I go into my lesson, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel. Not the power of any other nation. And what's his name? All right? Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Wawrakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters as well. And the water to you, I was shy, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. All right? The Lord, from the very beginning, already knew who, is, who his elect would be and who those who would come around acting like they're men of the Lord would be as well. There are a lot of phonies amongst us. And when I say amongst us, there are a lot of phonies who claim to be in the truth. But in reality... They are wolves in sheep clothing because they were set up from the foundation of the earth to be such a way. And I'm seeing spiritual numbers already back to back to back. It's amazing. Okay, let's jump into some scriptures, man. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter one. In verse four. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love so if the Lord is dealing with you if you are of the Lord's elect you are already chosen from the foundation of the world you're not going to make yourself the elect because of how great of a teacher you are okay or how handsome you think you are or how tall you are or because you can grow a beard on your face, okay? The elect have been predestined from the very beginning. And those on the outside of that have been predetermined already as well, okay? Here in these last days, the eyes of men are going to behold our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, come back on a great huge ship. Everybody is going to be in fear on that day. And it will not be a mistake on those who get left here and melted and those who get delivered up in those chariots because there is a division. Those who have been predestined from the foundation of the world to make it, they're going to make it. According as he had chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him and love having predestinated unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah Mashiach 
to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So based off of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai's will, if we are of the elect, that's why. It's not because of our greatness. It's not because of our works. It's not because of anything outside of the Lord showing mercy. The Lord's humility, he has set aside a special group within Israel known as the elect. Okay, and they've been predestined. They've already been chosen. Okay, we are just waiting to see it play out before our eyes. We are going to see the Lord manifest who are his and who are not his here in these times that we are in. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Okay? So the fact that we are going to receive a glorious kingdom, the fact that we're even Israelites, and then the Lord said, you know what? I'm going to give you this truth as well. I'm going to give you the ability to teach and to preach. That's not going to get us saved. What's going to get us saved is the fact that the Lord has already predetermined who his elect are, and he's going to put a particular spirit in them where they will show their faith by their works. Okay? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to the power for you, brethren, beloved, the Lord, because the power had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Okay? Believe. Everyone else is not our concern. This is only about the Lord's elect and the Lord's sheep are going to hear his voice. Okay? Let's read this again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to the power for you brethren, beloved of the Lord, because the power had from the beginning chosen you to salvation. So those who are granted salvation have already been chosen from the very beginning. I should have put my phone on airplane mode. That's what I should have did. Let me see if I can do that. Give me a second. Yeah, I got my phone on airplane mode. Hopefully, you know, that helps. So those who are going to receive salvation have been sanctified from the very beginning. So guess what? The elect are already the elect. Right now, the Lord is just waiting for his elect to be sealed. That's all. And once the elect is sealed, the Lord is going to allow all prophecies to be fulfilled. Okay? Through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Okay? So we're purified through the belief of this truth, of this gospel. And if you believe and you hold on and you endure, that's because you were predetermined from the very beginning to do so. Okay? Let's go to Matthews. You know, normally I'll teach with my Bible, but it is a little easier to teach with my tablet since I teach by myself. But, uh, it's still good to pick up that Bible and flip through them pages from time to time, man. To keep your thumb game strong, okay? The Lord teaches our hands to war. You know, we got, we got to keep our hands ready for war when we flipping through the pages, man. 
Let's go to Matthew 22 and 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. So guess what? Many are going to be called into this truth, but only few are chosen. And guess what? The few that are chosen have already been selected. They are already who they are. You can't make yourself to be a prophet if you're not a prophet. You can't make yourself one of the prophets of old if that's not who you are, okay? The Lord is revealing things to us through the spirit. And we understand that the majority of our people are not spiritual, okay? For many are called, but few are chosen. So many are being called into this ministry. We give out this word and you're basically being invited. This is a spiritual invitation. Okay, but if you don't hold on, if you can't endure, then guess what? You were already predestined to fall off because you fell into the lot of the many who may come in, but you weren't of the few that were already predestined to be chosen. And that's why we can't get messed up on all these non-believers. They were already set up from the foundation of the world to reject this word or to believe this word. That's not up to us. This is the Lord's movie, okay? Matthews. This is Matthews chapter 13 in verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. So many are called, but few are chosen. So the kingdom of heaven is like a net. Many people will be drawn into this ministry, good and bad. Okay? But if they're not of the elect, they'll be thrown back into the sea. Okay? They'll fall back into the world. But if they be of the elect and they get caught up in that net, okay, they're going to be the ones who remain on that spiritual arc, so to speak. Okay? Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened or is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So the Lord is bringing in all different types of Israelites. He's bringing in the elect and he's bringing in the Judas goats. He's bringing in those who are perpetrators, man. Okay? Bringing in a lot of different types of spirits and we have to be circumspect of that. Okay? We have to be aware of that. So many are coming into this ministry, even the non-elect. So just because someone knows they're an Israelite, just because someone comes out here and they, and they teach and they have a lot of views or whatever the case may be, or even if they don't have a lot of views, okay? If Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai has already predestined them to be a wicked, evil Israelite, we can't do nothing about that. And all those who fall into that lot, we can't do nothing about that. Okay? The Lord is dividing within the, uh, the, the household of faith, the real from the fake. Okay? Because again, many are called, many Israelites come into this truth, but they're getting thrown back into the sea because they're not really of this thing. Okay? Let's go forward. Let's go to the book of Jude, chapter 1 and verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unaware. So here it is when we uh, bring in the net. We, we look in the net and not only do we see fish, we see uh, tennis shoes, we see boots, we, we see old uh, fitted caps. Okay, we see old plastic bottles. All that extra stuff has to get thrown back out into the sea. And that's you Israelites 
who have crept in unaware with the appearance of being of this about this but you're really not for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation so there are men and women who were ordained from from the very beginning to be condemned to come into this ministry and then fall away okay for whatever particular reason it is okay ultimately because that was their lot that was their destiny that was what the lord put out for them ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness so turning the grace of our lord into to shamelessness okay and denying the only lord power and our lord yahweh shai mashiach so many of our people are going to perpetrate and act as if they're really for yahweh shai but at the end of the day they're going to find some way somehow to fall back into the world when ultimately that's the lord throwing their asses back into the sea because they were ordained to be condemned from the beginning so we're hoping to be ordained to be the Lord's elect because everything is already wrote out for us. This is the book of Psalms chapter 90 and verse 8. Verse Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins and the light of thou countenance. So our secret sins are sins that we may not remember sins from our past lives okay we're hoping to be forgiven for not only sins that we've done in this particular life but all the sins in our other lives man okay for all our days are passed away and thy wrath we spend our years as a tale that is told so our life is already written for us whatever your story is it's already specifically written for you my story, okay, my legacy is already written for me, okay? Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So the things that were written aforetime, guess what? They were written for the elect today. The elect have already known this truth. The elect have acquired this before. But we fell away from this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And we're being brought back through the Holy Spirit. And the Lord has used men. He has raised up men as teachers to spread that fire of truth to other males within Israel to be inspired to teach and to preach the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, if it be in their lot to be a prophet. Okay? And a lot of men are jealous when they see the Lord working with you. A lot of men are jealous when they see the Lord is showing you spiritual signs. And they get angry and bitter in their heart because they were already predestined to be an angry, bitter, no good individual from the very beginning that's why for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope so reading these scriptures we are relearning what we already knew we're coming back into the remembrance of this knowledge wisdom and understanding and again, it's already predestined whether or not you are the Lord's elect. Okay? It's already wrote for us. I'm going to go to the Apocrypha. Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 21. For thy law is burnt. Therefore no man knoweth the things 
that are done of thee, or the work that shall begin. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that has been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which live in the latter days may live. So those who live in the latter days, which is us, we're back in the reincarnation, relearning what we already knew. Okay? These scriptures, if the Lord is dealing with you, he's going to shake up your mind to remember this truth. That's why when you hear certain things, okay, you automatically click. Like when you hear that you're an Israelite, I know for myself, I was like, yep, that's it. Why? Because I once knew this already. I already knew in my spirit. That's it. Okay? The, the, the so-called Negroes are of the tribe of Judah. Uh, Issachar is the, the so-called Mexican. All of that just felt right in my spirit. No deception to it. It just felt right, man. A lot of you people, you follow your heart and you're being led astray. But the spirit was convicting me where certain things that were being said even when I uh, first was coming into this ministry, it was already in my spirit like, yep, that's it. It's all about the elect. Yep, that's it, man. That's the answer. Okay? Because we already knew this once before. And here we are in the latter days, re, um, relearning all that we once knew. Okay? But I have found grace before thee. Sin the Holy Ghost into me. And it's the Holy Ghost that's allowing us to remember. Okay? But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me. I'm going to hold that. This is the book of John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, not some man on earth, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Lord is putting things in our, our memory that we already knew. The Lord has shaken us up out of that sleep that we was once in. That's why any of you Israelites who aren't speaking according to this word, that's because the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is not in you. Okay? So the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is allowing us, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to remember that we are Israelites. Remember the names of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Remember that we have enemies amongst these other nations. They are not our friends. Remember that we were not sent here to, to thrive and to prosper. Remember why we went into captivity. Okay? Let's go back to 2 Ezra 14 and 22. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that has been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path. And that they which live in the latter days may live. So those who are going to live in the latter days are the elect. Those who are already predestinated to receive this word, which they already knew, which they already once had. Okay? Let's go forward now. Let's go back to Jude. Jude chapter 1 and verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. So we're being put in remembrance all our history. We're being put in remembrance of who we are. Okay? We're being put in remembrance that the prophets are back through reincarnation. We're not just average, everyday guys just doing this because the fact that the Lord has shown us spiritual signs, it would be, which the Lord can do what he wants, 
But it would be strange for the Lord to show a man spiritual signs to be with the man just to cast him away. Again, the Lord can do what he wants, but we believe through faith that we are the man of the Lord, that, that we are the prophets. I believe that I'm a prophet, man. Okay? And for my brothers out there doing the same thing that I'm doing, you brothers know who you are. I will lay down my life for you, man. And I'm not just saying that in word. To you brothers whose comment board I've, I've spoke on, I'm not just speaking to you like you just some nigga, man. I really believe you're a man of the Lord. And I would lay my life down for you because Yahweh Shai would want that if I had to. But I would rather live for you, brothers. And we are living for each other because through this word we have life. Okay? And I always feel in my spirit, if you're in a camp and you're not willing to lay down your life for a brother, if you're not willing to be a servant to your brother, you shouldn't be next to him. And he shouldn't be next to you. Y'all ain't good for each other, man. All right? Jude 1 and 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. So we already knew this truth before. But the Heavenly Father is putting us back in remembrance. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the Lord's going to do the same thing. He's going to deliver the elect out of this modern day Egypt. And all you other Israelites who don't believe, you're going to be destroyed. It's going to happen all over again. Not only are people reincarnated, events are reincarnated. Okay? Let's go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. In verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. Be a book of remembrance was written before him for them. That feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And that shows you that this can't be everybody because there's plenty of Israelites not thinking on the name of the Lord. You have Israelites calling on Jesus Christ. You have Israelites calling on Yeshua or Yahshua. Okay? They're not calling on Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? And you can't get to the Father, Yahweh, without going through Yahweh Shai. And you women can't go to Yahweh Shai without going through the men. Okay? Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. So this book is for the men who fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Which are who? The elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? The Lord ain't dealing with, uh, with all Israelites right now. Okay? And this book is, is reminding us of what we once knew. We already knew this truth. But we fell away and Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is reimbursing that, that, that spirit that was once in us. Then they that feared the Lord, which are the elect, spake often one to another. Okay? And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And how are we speaking often one to another doing these lessons? Certain brothers may have camps and they fellowship. Brothers may link up and fellowship. Okay? And here in these times that we're in, the Lord is going to bring more brothers together to fellowship. Okay? Because the Lord's men are back. Period. Point blank. All right? And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So this book of remembrance is for the elect. And that's why the elect are remembering this truth. That's why the elect are able to grasp this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And the rest of you Israelites, you can't get it. Okay? Because it's not for you. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 9. 
Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days and the generations of old. Art thou not it that had cut rehab and wounded the dragon? So we have to awake like in the days of old. And if the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son wanted to, they could tell you who you are through the reincarnation. A lot of men in this truth will try to tell you there's no way that you can know who you are, but some man can tell you who you are. Okay? Like the Lord can't show you signs, but yet you have to wait on some man who may not even be spiritual to tell you who he thinks you might be. And that's not important, but at the same time, the Lord is going to reveal things to us here in these days, uh, these last days, because this is the last time that we'll be prophesying. The Lord is going to do amazing things for us, and that includes revealing secrets and mysteries to us, and that may include your identity, who you are, through the Spirit, okay? And through the Spirit, I have an idea of who I might think certain brothers are. We don't necessarily know fully, but the Lord is putting the spirit in the air, man. The Lord is really stirring up our minds and having us ponder like, hmm, this brother could be Daniel. This brother could be, um, uh, um, <laughs> this brother could be Jeremiah. This brother could be Amos. Okay. And you look at the attributes and things that line up with these men and you'd be like, wow, that's crazy because the Lord is, is stirring our minds up. Okay. Because the prophets are back. And if the Lord is dealing with you, if he wants you to know who you are, he can do what he wants. All right? Awake, awake. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days and the generations of old. And that's what we're doing right now. We're awaking as in the days of old. Now we're back in the spirit of the prophets. Now we're back in the spirit of knowing that we're the Israelites, calling on the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai again. Okay? We're back from the grave, doing this again, man. And all of the times that uh, the, the prophets have been slayed and killed and people just went on with their lives, this is that generation that's actually going to pay for all the bloodshed of my brethren, okay? Art thou not it that had cut rehab and wounded the dragon? And this is Isaiah being told of who he was in his past life. Okay, or being told about a reputation from his past life more so. Okay, but giving you insight or showing you the Lord can easily send you signs on who you could be. Or send you signs on who this individual might be. Because you have to be careful with certain brethren. Okay, they'll, they'll, they'll be respected persons. They'll tell you that this brother such and such, but you can't be nobody. <laughs> right? You feel something, but they'll tell you you're crazy, but they'll say, this brother such and such. That's hypocrisy. If the Lord is talking to you, if the Lord is dealing with you, you need to listen. And the Lord is stirring up our minds in way of remembrance. Listen to when the Lord's talking, man. A lot of Jake, you're, you're so humble that you miss what the Lord is trying to say to you, which we're supposed to be humble. We're supposed to be full of humility. But you become so humble that you're, 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 uh, you're not even seeing what the Lord is doing for you. Okay? Let's go to Luke 15. Luke 15 and verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this. Thy brother was dead and is alive again. So we are alive again. Why? Because at one time we once had this truth. We once had this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We had that breath of life within us. Then we fell away. We lost it. We fell far away. We became destroyed for that lack of knowledge. But the Lord has given us that knowledge back through the Holy Spirit that is dealing with certain particular men. And there's an order. And me, myself, I'm just an average guy who the Lord has uh, 
given the ability to teach and to preach this word, man. But I'm an average guy. I got to work a job like anybody else, man. There's really nothing special about me. But I will say the Lord be showing me that he is with me and I'm thankful for it. And I ain't even like on no level like that. The Lord be showing me different signs and I'll be like, wow, me, you know, me. I don't want to question it, but I'm thankful for it. You know, the world has constantly shunned me and rejected me throughout my life. But then for the Heavenly Father to come and like do stuff for me and show me stuff, it puts me in, in a state of awe and amazement and, and it humbles me, man. And it shows me that he's a true friend. And on behalf of Yahweh, why Yahweh shy, you brothers in this ministry are my friends. And again, I am willing for my brethren to lay my life down because Yahweh shy told us there's no greater friend than that. And I want to please him. I'm willing to do whatever in righteousness for Yahweh shy, man. I'm with it. Okay? I'm, I'm with whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you. You can go too far. You can't go too far. I'm with whatever. Okay? If Yahweh Shai was like, boom, 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 right now, I'm like, I'm with it right now. I'm on it right now. Let's read out of this verse in Luke 15 and 32 again. It was me that we should make merry and be glad for this. Thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found and we're coming back into this ministry we're found again because at one time we were in darkness man we didn't know anything when it came to what we should have known isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them so at one time we were not speaking according to the word we may have had a zeal for the lord like for me I have a tattoo on my arm that says faith. I have another tattoo. It says WWJD for what would Jesus do? Right? But that was in my ignorance. That was back in the world. That was my zeal. I always believed, but I was doing it in my ignorance. So I was going off. The number 12. Okay? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because... There is no light in them. So if you're not speaking according to this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, it is because there is no light in you. Okay? And we have the light in us. Thanks to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Let's jump back to Luke 15 and 32. It was me that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And how are we alive again? Let's go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this word is within us. And now that the word is within us, we are alive again. And notice it said again, because we once knew this through reincarnation. We're back in the flesh and we have received this word again and a new body, a new earthly body, but the same old spirit. Okay. Revelations. Revelations chapter 11 and verse three. And I will give the power unto my two witnesses. Speaking of what? The southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, which as a whole collectively represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred, three score days clothed in sackcloth. And the sackcloth shows you we got to be humble. Okay, we're not out here trying to be proud. Okay? Let me go down to uh, 13. That's really what I wanted to get. I think. Dang, where's that at?
Give me a second. I'm going to type in uh, something on my search engine. It's in the book of Revelations. I think it's in chapter 13. Give me a second. Okay, it's Revelations chapter 10. Revelations chapter 10 and verse 11. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And one thing about this ministry, you got to take in the bitter and the sweet. Okay? When it starts to get bitter in your belly... You, you got you to gotta try to hold on to it because when something gets bitter in your belly, it becomes easy to want to throw it up. But if you throw it up, you know, it's not really going to be beneficial to you. Because even when you look at certain medicines or even certain vegetables, it's the bitter things that's really good for you. So if you can manage to keep that bitterness down, a.k.a. endure it, hold on to it. OK, there is a, uh, a promise. There is a reward waiting for us, man. And you brothers out there teaching and preaching, you are the prophets of old, man. You are the prophets of old. I look at you, brothers, and, and, and through the spirit, I'd be like, man, I truly believe this. This has to be a man of the Lord. This has to be a man of the Lord. And I'd be so convicted where it's like you can't tell me different. And that's not being proud. It's, it's my belief. Why, why would I be in this ministry if my belief was little? Why would, I, why would I speak on things that I didn't believe? That would be dumb as hell. I believe a lot of you brothers within this ministry, I believe you are the prophets coming back in the reincarnation. And I believe I myself are one or am one as well. I truly believe that from the bottom of my heart. And he said unto me, speaking to John, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So it was told to John that he would come back in the reincarnation to prophesy, to preach once again. Guess what? John is back on earth right now. And I'm not saying I'm John, but I find it beautiful and it's scary because I try to run from it. But I have so many similarities with John. It's crazy, man. It's like I try not to think about it and the Lord would just put it back on me, man. And it's like when you when you match things up with certain men, you'd be like, yeah, he, he reminds me of this character or he reminds me of this person in the Bible or he reminds me of this dude I went to school with. Right. Well, there's things about myself. It lines up with John the Revelator, bro. Like it's scary as hell, man. And I'm not putting it on myself. I'm not saying I'm John the Revelator at all. What I'm saying is. We have a lot in common, and if I am, ain't nothing I can do about that. Ain't nothing that you can do about that. We are who we are. Things are going to be revealed in these last days, but I'm excited to know that I could be based off of how my life has totally lined up with John's life. Spiritual visions and everything has lined up with John's visions, and it's like, man, what if? That's just more hope. We're in this truth. We're prisoners of hope. I hope that I could be, because that means I was with you, I was shy. Why wouldn't I hope that? And you're going to have some Israelites who will be haters and think I'm crazy for saying that, but that's all right. Long story short, the prophets are back. The apostle John is back. Most of the 12 are back. Okay? Some people believe uh, King David was somebody else. Others may believe uh, King David was this person or whatever the case okay i believe uh because i get the names mixed up forgive me a lot of men believe that i believe it was uh alba bibbins that he was king david some men don't believe that okay so you not believing that somebody's a certain person that's cool but at the same time if somebody lines up with an individual 
you can't really say nothing against that. Okay, I mean, you can hate, but you, you can't block what the Lord's doing. Long story short, though, again, the men of the Lord are back on earth. And he said unto me, this is Revelations chapter 10 and verse 11. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So John the Revelator is back on earth right now. Okay. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 14. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again woe is me woe is me who will deliver me in those days so Ezra is back because he knew he would come back in the reincarnation to witness the destruction of america he knew that he would come back in the reincarnation and see the destruction and he was saying woe is me woe is me who will deliver me and the answer is yahweh by shimei shai is going to deliver us in these times to come that are finally approaching us man we've been waiting on this for thousands of years and we're finally about to get what we've been promised man and i want what's promised to me to hell with all you niggas who don't want what's promised i want the promise man that's been promised to our people but we got to keep fighting man we got to keep putting in that work okay Like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils what shall i do when these evils shall come so he knew that he would be here to experience the end of this world he knew that he would be here to witness world war three okay now back then it wasn't called world war three back then it wasn't called nuclear missiles it was in cold talk it was parabolic okay but we understand through the spirit what that was speaking of. So the Lord has risen up the prophets once again to come out here and to preach and to prophesy. Okay? This is the book. Uh, First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So the prophets are back here on earth, right? You have a lot of people they will tell you how much they love who they call Jesus Christ. They'll tell you, oh, their favorite book is Jeremiah. Their favorite book is Matthew. They'll, they'll read about all the Lord's disciples and all that. But then don't even realize some of those men are in their face today and they hate them. Those men are back here today and you hate us. Okay? We're doing the same thing that those men did themselves because we're in the same lot as those men. Because we have the same spirit as those men. Because we are those men coming back in the reincarnation. And I'm, I'm totally confident in that. You can't tell me no different. I feel in my heart of hearts, I'm, I'm a man of the Lord based off of the Lord showing humility towards me. Okay? That's what I believe. And you, you can't tell me different. All right? And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So 
Every time you come back in the reincarnation, your spirit is always going to come back as a righteous spirit. Even in darkness, we still had a zeal. You know, we still had a, a difference about us compared to everybody else. But overall, that spirit that's within you, when the Lord ignites it, when he turns it on, you prophesy because the spirit within you is a prophet and the Lord activates it. So the prophets are back here on earth, okay? And you hate them. This is Luke. This is Luke chapter 6. In verse 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. My family hate me. I go to my job. People know what I do so I can feel people, you know, talking shit. People laughing at times. People will separate from me. I feel that. But, but it's all right because I believe what I'm doing so much that I want it more because I want the Lord to see I'm about this no matter what. Hell, I'm willing to, to lay down my life for this truth, man. I would hope to be delivered. I want the Lord to deliver me from all the destruction. That's what I want. But I'm so um, inspired through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemi I was shy. I'm about it, man. I'm about, I'm about this, man. You can't tell me that this ain't the truth. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me the prophets aren't back on the earth. You can't tell me that the, the elders and apostles who have been doing this longer than me are not some of the prophets coming back. Okay? A lot of you might think, oh, all the prophets have to come out of, out of uh, one west directly. You have to come out of one rest directly to know who you are. No, man. The prophets are all throughout the earth. And all the 144,000 is not going to be in Great Millstone. But the 144,000 will be teaching the doctrine that Yahweh by Shemi was Shai has uh, spread through Great Millstone. Okay? The heads of Israel are the heads of Great Millstone. But everyone in Great Millstone is not the elect. And being in Great Millstone does not uh, validate you or make you, you know, already on a chariot. And not being in Great Millstone don't mean you're not of the Lord's elect. You might be one of the top men and you're not even in Great Millstone. Okay? But in the kingdom, we'll find out who's the greatest and all that. None of that matters. What matters is we stay humble. We remain servants to each other. We keep spreading this gospel of truth, uh, spreading this fire so that our people may be illuminated through the words of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. Because guess what? He gets all the glory. He's the reason why I'm out here. He's giving me the ability. And you brothers that, that's doing what I'm doing, he's giving you the ability. Okay? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company. This is my life story, man. And shall reproach you and cast your name out as evil for the son of man's sake. I work with uh one of my brothers, man. One of my blood brothers. And I feel like he with everybody else, man. Like he, he's just my enemy. I feel like he, he hates me. I feel like I have brothers that want to kill me. That's what I feel like. I feel like if, if they had opportunity, they would kill me. For whatever reason, right? It's just a weird vibe I get amongst my own family. How much more the world that I come out amongst. People that don't even know who I am. How much more these people, man? We have a lot of enemies, but that shows you we're in this ministry. We also have a lot of people who love us. Okay? There's a balance. Okay? Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So it's a good sign to be rejected of this world. Again, the prophets are back. 
one of the signs that's going to show if you're one of those men is the fact that you're not popular. A lot of people may not watch your videos because they're separating you from their company. Yahweh Shai himself said this to his disciples. Okay? So if you're not living those symptoms, you may not be a man of the Lord. Okay? Everybody likes you. And one thing about me, if you come to my comment board and you have something smart to say, I won't even block your comment. I'll deal with the humility, say what you want to say, but all enemies of the Lord are going to fucking die. Okay? That's just what it is. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. Make sure I'm still rolling. Your reward is great in heaven, for in, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the false prophets. All right? So if you're a false prophet, yeah, people will speak well of you. All right? So the prophets are back, and y'all are speaking evil of us. But the prophets aren't the only ones who are back. All the enemies of the Lord are back. Okay? Revelations chapter 1 and verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Speaking of Yahweh Shai, coming with chariots. He's coming with a fleet of angels. And not all of them are going to look like so-called uh, circular UFOs. Some may look like triangles. Some may look like ovals. Okay? Some may look like a, like a three-dimensional figure. Okay? Like a... Like a uh, not a Rubik's Cube, but a... Uh, I can't think of the word right now. You know, like when you when you fold up paper and make it like 3D, like origami or something or something like that. Okay, some of the chariots may look origami, but they're not going to all just come looking the same, man. But Yahweh Shah is coming with a fleet of chariots. Okay, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, showing you this has to be a pretty big so-called UFO. And they also which pierced him. So the Romans that pierced him, okay, those who are mocking him, those who are laughing him to scorn, those who gave him piss to drink, those who were talking about, uh, you know, if you're if you're a son of God, basically show us, prove it to us, okay? Totally humili hum humiliating our Lord, you're back today. And you're going to get your judgment. And you may be one of the Rothschilds. You may be one of the DuPonts. But you got to be someone way at the top. You got to be. But all you Romans who had anything to do with piercing our Lord, you're back here today to get your judgment. And all you Israelites who gave him up to those Romans, you're here today as well. Okay? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So, those who pierced him are back in the reincarnation. Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, he was crucified over 2,000 years ago. So when he returns, for them to still be alive, they will be over 2,000 years old. Okay? This is speaking of their spirit being back on earth in a different body. Okay? And they also, which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Let's go to Matthews 27. So the Lord's enemies are back too. Not, not just the prophets. The Lord's enemies are back as well. We're at the very end. That's why the Lord is bringing all these different characters back in this final uh, hoorah. Okay? Imagine a film where every single character that the director found favor in, whether good or bad, he just says, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just put all the characters together. Okay? Like, like, Super, like uh, Super Mario Smash Brothers. Matthews 27 and 22. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do? Pilate said unto them, 
what shall I do then with Yahweh Shai, which is called Mashiach? They all say unto him, speaking of our wicked ass people, and this is the southern kingdom. This is speaking to uh, my kingdom, the southern kingdom. This is you niggas, man. Okay? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more saying, let him be crucified. So Pilate, showing some integrity, our own people were surpassing the deeds of this nigga. He are the devil. He's of Esau Edom. He's showing a level of integrity. Our people is like, nah, fuck integrity. Crucify him. We just want to see him dead. We don't even care. Just get rid of him. That was the mentality of you wicked ass Israelites who are back here today. Who gave him up to the Romans who are back here today. Okay? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made. So our, our people were going crazy. Like, no, this, this has to be done. He has to be crucified. Okay? Our people were in such an uproar of anger towards Yahweh Shai. Why? Because this world hates our Lord. And that's why they hate us. Because they hated him before they hated us. Okay? Just like uh, there's, there's a certain particular nigga, man. At my job, every time he look at me, he just be giving me these dark stares like, like he just want to take me out, man. You know, like, like he's Judas or something. And you got a lot of Israelites, they just have that look about them. Like you could tell, like, like if they could, they, they try you. You know what I mean? When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, see ye to it. So even an Edomite show more integrity than you wicked ass fucking niggas, man. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be upon us and our children. So you Israelites who asked that curse to be upon you, your prayers were answered. That curse is going to be upon you. So guess what? The Lord brought you back here in this final time, this final time for you to receive your judgment. So what he did was he woke up his prophets, this one last hoorah to come out here to teach and to prophesy, to forewarn you, give you this truth, give you this knowledge, wisdom and understanding. So you're not walking around like a dumbass. OK, but the majority of you, you're blocked from this ministry because you're cursed based off of your own wish. When you gave up your Yahweh Shai, you cursed yourself, okay? For thousands of years, and the only penalty of that is ultimately, you know, to catch a missile. I believe all of you Israelites out there who told uh, Pilate to let Yahweh Shai's blood be upon your hands, I believe y'all are going into the missiles, man. Y'all are, are either going to die by famine or y'all are going to die by thermonuclear missiles. Okay? Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and on our children. I'm going to close it with this here. I think I'm rolling. I'm going to close it with this here. Luke chapter 11 in verse 50 that the blood of all the prophets starting with Yahweh Shai which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation so everybody's back man okay reincarnation's real all the Lord's chosen they're here they're back on earth all of the great multitude of Israelites who are going to be called into this ministry and cast it into, into the lake of fire or just cast it back into the world to die of whatever judgments the Lord has in store for them. Whatever their 
their their lot is for them, well, they're back. All of those who who uh wanted to see our Lord crucified are back. The Romans who crucified our Lord is back. We're already back in the Roman Empire. Okay. I even work at a job, and the the logo is a Roman logo. Okay, because we're back in Rome as well. That that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, Zacharias, which perished between the altar. So going all the way back to Abel, all the way up to the prophets after, but more so starting with Yahweh Shai, because out of all the prophets that y'all slain, all the blood of the prophets that you're guilty for, Yahweh Shai is the ultimate one you got to pay for. And this is the generation that will pay. This is the generation looking at the prophets that are written in the Bible right before your face, man. Okay? Believe it or not. We here, man. That's why we're doing it. That's why the Lord is showing us signs. Okay? Because the Lord is verifying what we're doing. He's verifying what we're doing with signs and wonders, man. Okay? So I'm going to go on ahead and uh, wrap this up. And I'm going to give all thanks and praises unto our power. The power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. All right? And what's his name? Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Wabrakakwadash. Lord willing, this was simple and it was edifying. Until my next lesson, Shalom.